women good day and welcome to the team lead services q1 fy24 earnings conference call hosted by icici securities we have with us today mr ashok reddy md and ceo mr sunil cheman kotil ceo specialized staffing mr kartik narayan ceo staffing ms ramni dathi chief financial officer and mr kunal dharat head investor relations we will start off with the remarks from management after which we will open the floor for q and a session as a reminder all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touch tone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to the team lead management thank you and over to you mr reddy thank you very much and good evening everyone uh, i think we ended the quarter on a strong note from a revenue growth perspective uh at the group level the revenue grew by 7% quarter on quarter and 16% year on year and this is largely driven by a strong uptick in the general staffing uh business in net headcount uh we have added about 13000 headcount in q1 uh taking the total billable headcount to a little over 2.37 lakhs uh and the staffing revenue grew 8% uh, quarter on quarter um i think the downside of uh headcount from degree apprenticeship continues to uh play out uh this is the neem numbers that we said would uh kind of uh, sunset over three quarters uh and uh, we did have a trainee headcount drop of about 8000 uh in q1 uh on that front and you know there will be some more that will drop out over the coming two quarters uh but parallelly we have started seeing green shoots in the other elements of uh the service offering and products where we bring trainees on board uh under the da business which should start seeing some traction in the coming quarter uh in the specialized staffing also uh we had the headwind continues to be there with limited number of open positions and a decline in the net head count of associates uh however we have managed to sustain revenues and uh the profit level uh at the specialized staffing business uh, despite the head count uh waiting to see a turn around in the external market condition uh there is a seasonality in the edtech business coupled with also the it training uh, element going slower as an overall industry sentiment uh and that has impacted the revenues and profits for that segment in q1 i think overall uh the drop in sequential ebitda is on account of the neem headcount loss the seasonality in edtech and the core employee annual hikes uh but i think overall with our improved uh sales and hiring capabilities uh the general staffing business is on a strong growth trajectory uh waiting for a turn around in the specialized staffing macro uh trends for the open positions and growth to come back and i think as the neem headcount transitions out over the coming two quarters uh we do start we will start to see uh green shoots in the aspect of the other uh, elements of uh, areas that we bring trainees on board uh with that i will have my colleagues give an update uh and then follow it up with questions uh kartik on the staffing side yeah thank you ashok uh, good evening everyone uh, i'm pleased to share the highlights from our q1 uh, fy24 performance during the quarter as ashok mentioned we witnessed notable progress in general staffing with a net addition of nearly 13000 plus associates uh, marking the highest number reported in the last six quarters 
Uh, we experienced a 6% quarter-on-quarter incremental growth in headcount, uh, an 8% quarter-on-quarter in revenue, uh, and uh, 18% year-on-year, reflecting the positive momentum in our business uh, and the market as well. Uh, we continue to grow uh, with our larger customers, which means they seek pricing efficiency for volumes uh, impacting our average realization or PFBM. Uh, PFBM is flat quarter-on-quarter, quarter, but dropped uh, about 2.5% on year-on-year basis. That said, uh, we are innovating and doing several things for cross-selling and upselling, and we are seeing some green shoots, uh, but the full revenue impact and difference would need a little bit more time uh, for it to actualize. Uh, the PFSI, or the banking finance and consumer business verticals, continue to show promising growth, uh, and we anticipate further opportunities in these areas. Although there was a degree of slowdown due to unseasonal rains in some parts of the country, which impacted the consumer business, overall growth has been driven by the formalization in large FMCG companies. Um, given the highly fragmented nature of the staffing market, we understand customers have choices. Uh, but what we have seen these past two quarters is the return of customers who appreciate our strength, uh, especially in statutory compliance, apart from hiring and technology that we bring to the table. Needless to say, some amount of consolidation is inevitable in this market and is increasing push of compliance and formalization. Uh, the question really is when rather than why. Financial services and consumer goods are our two top segments uh, from a base perspective and in also in terms of absolute growth. Uh, an associate count, closely followed by retail and telecom. Both consumer goods and BFSI achieved growth rates of over 7% and 6% respectively uh, in terms of associate growth compared to the previous quarter. Our sales effort resulted in 42 new logo signups, primarily in the retail consumer and BFSI segments. Uh, another interesting aspect is we hired around 19,000 individuals during Q1 through our own sources, with, which is a 30% increase from the previous quarter. Uh, and 32% of them were hired through non-recruiter channels, leading to a decrease of 11% in our cost of hiring as compared to Q4. Our STE, or full-time equivalent, improved by 4%, uh, driven by a 6% increase in associate headcount. Our investments in digitization initiatives have shown some positive efficiency gains, allowing us to cater to a larger client base while maintaining our core employee strength. Uh, therefore, we witnessed a 2% reduction in our cost per associate quarter on quarter, uh, indicating progress in our ongoing process improvements. Uh, as we move forward, we see positive signs around hiring in telecom, led by 5G growth, financial services in the services sector, uh, as well as the FMCG and FMCG retail space. There are specific opportunities around manufacturing, led by uh, uh, Government of India's PLI schemes. Uh, these open positions are field recruitment in non-metro locations, and we are working on improving our execution capability in hiring in this sector. Looking ahead to Q2, we have a healthy pipeline uh, and see emerging demand across most of our customers. Uh, while the challenge in certain sectors persists, we believe in the opportunities presented by the continued formalization in the consumer space, along with anticipated capacity increase in electronics manufacturing. Our focus uh, remains steadfast on execution, uh, particularly in sales and hiring. Uh, the benefits of uh, digitalization and process improvements are starting to manifest, and we are optimistic about the impact uh, they will have in the future. Thank you so much, and over to Sunil. Thanks, Karthik. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, from the specialized staffing perspective, uh, most of the customers have slowed down on hiring and are focused on improving the utilization factor through effective uh, capacity utilization rather than adding headcount. Even the replacement hirings have been very selective of late. The open demands continue to hover around 40 to 50 percentage of what we used to service earlier. While we have witnessed a huge drop in requirements from IT services customers, we saw some green shoots with global capability centers and non-tech clients. However, the volumes are not very comparable. Anticipating a prolonged slowdown in tech hiring, we had embarked on cost rationalization activity from end of last physical. The impact of the same continued in Q1, resulting in a much leaner team as per the current market conditions. Uh, as far as sales is concerned, we have won 13 new clients out of which seven are large clients. We have built a strong pipeline and we expect to continue the sales momentum in the rest of the fiscal. We were able to mitigate the erosion of base in IT services clients through additions in the uh, GCC and non-tech customer base, thereby maintaining the revenue numbers sequentially while there has been a dip of 3% on year-on-year -on -year basis. Our headcount has dropped 3% sequentially and 15% on year-on-year -year basis. 
the substantial difference you see in headcount compared to last year is due to the fact that we let go a large telecom uh, mandate uh, which was around 1000 headcount in the last fiscal our ebitda grew nominally by 2% sequentially while on a year on year basis we have a substantial dip of 26% Overall, economic downturn has affected hiring activities in the tech sector, leading to a decrease in the demand for our services. With prolonged uncertainty, our clients have taken a very cautious approach and we understand that hiring will continue to be under pressure in the near term. In the previous year, we had undertaken a comprehensive review of our operations to identify areas where we can optimize cost and leverage technology, which has helped us to sustain the business. we shall continue to take adequate measures based on the business scenario going forward we shall put in our best efforts to weather the current headwinds and deliver optimum results thank you thank you sunil good evening everyone we have completed the buyback process in this quarter with a total cash outflow of 120 crore including taxes also during the quarter we have received 36 crore of income tax refunds for assessment year 2021 taking the total cash balance to over 300 crore total outstanding tds receivable as of date is 230 crore including current financial year 2024 in terms of sequential performance there are few items which impacted the ebitda the main item is seasonal drop in the revenue and contribution of edtech business by about 3 and 1/2 crore secondly drop in neem headcount in da business has contributed to a drop of 3 crore in net revenue The last item is annual employee hike to the tune of 2.7 crore in Q1. There has been no increase in the overall funding exposure or capital employed across the businesses compared to last quarter. Operating cash flow conversion to EBITDA stands at 85% for the current quarter. FTE productivity in staffing has improved from 350 to 355 on QoQ basis. Core employee headcount decreased by 8% year on year in line with the cost optimization measures taken up. current quarter had 36 headcount reduction on core employee front with a combination of business growth and initiatives on productivity and optimization we expect steady improvement in absolute profits from q2 sequentially and there on thank you we are good to go for the questions now thank you very much sir we will now begin the question and answer session anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We have the first question from the line of. Mukul Garg from Motilal Oswal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Ashok Karthik, uh, you know, first on the general staffing profitability, uh, how should kind of you know we see uh, the profitability improvement measures uh, play out over next few quarters? Uh, if I see your uh, you know qualitative numbers, the PAPM has now you know is, is flat. I don't know whether it has stabilized or not. Uh, but you know how do you see that play out uh, going forward uh, your staff productivity has also improved uh, but still there was a fairly big drop in margins uh, how should we uh, see the margins uh, play out over next few quarters and and when do you expect them to kind of normalize their two historical levels and also if you can just uh, help us understand is there a a kind of a, uh, a you know Uh, a kind of a choice which you have to take between growth and margins so uh, your growth in general staffing is you know is fairly good but margins are not following that so if you can just help us understand is is the growth coming at the cost of uh, you know profitability yeah thanks mukul um no so i don't think there's a choice to be made between growth and profitability while clearly as kartik did call out uh, as some of the bigger uh customers uh, as big customers get bigger uh there is a competitiveness on the papm uh however uh you know by virtue of uh a customer mix and some elements of innovation on pricing uh we have been able to hold the papm across the quarter 
uh, there will be, and there is still competitive pressure on the PAPM, and it's something that, as a conscious effort, uh, Karthik has multiple things playing out at the PNL level uh, to sustain and grow as we go forward. Uh, I think also from the technology digitalization productivity aspect uh, will continue to play out for the business where the FT ratio will improve and uh, you know the overall cost uh, to servicing will come down. But I think at a margin level, the hit is largely from a perspective that wages are going up. And uh, at a percentage level, uh, while we clearly do believe that with scale, absolute profits for the business will go up, uh, at a percentage level, they are looking depressed primarily as a function of wage levels and the flat PAPMs. Uh, so I think uh, increased element of productivity coupled with the portfolio coming to play, uh, which is specialized staffing and DA uh, also starting to uh, grow uh, is what would leverage the uh, margins over a period of time. Uh, if we really look at it, because VA has also an uh, element of service from a common uh, end, uh, the DA headcounts have been reducing. Uh, like I called out, I think as we look at the name transitioning out over the coming two quarters, uh, other uh, vectors should start giving a net positive growth uh, towards the end of quarter two. Uh, and that, again, should start helping to improve the margin. Understood. Uh, thanks a lot for taking my uh, question. I'll get back into the queue. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one. We have the next question from the line of Vidit Shah from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, good afternoon, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, just uh, staying on the margins um, that, that you spoke about, um, uh, just trying to understand the dynamics of the business here. So, uh, you know, EBITDA of uh, staffing and allied services fell from 29 crores to 25 crores, uh, which is a 4 crore drop, and um, I think Rammi explained that about 3, 3.5 crores comes from... Um, uh, the loss of uh, the neem apprentices. Uh, but shouldn't you also expect some offset uh, from the 13,000 or the uh, uh, headcount that we added during the quarter and, you know, expect, uh, you know, the, the EBITDA to remain flat uh, QOQ, uh, you know, ignoring the margins but just the absolute number? Hi, is it? Uh, yes, you are right. Sequentially, there is a three and a half crore drop in the EBITDA of staffing segment, uh, which is mainly driven by the NEEM headcount loss. So that itself is a three and a half crore impact. And on top of that, we have core employee appraisal pertaining to staffing segment, which is close to two crore. So we got almost a two crore growth on this 13,000 headcount in net revenue, uh, but that got negated with three and a half from uh, uh, the NEEM business loss and two crores from core employee appraisal. Okay, and, and in this 25 crore that we report, how much uh, further name EBITDA is there uh, that, that is potentially, uh, you know, at risk? We still have another 10,000 headcount, uh, and we are expecting that it can be completely phased out in the next two quarters. So that 10,000 headcount would, would be roughly another three crores? Would that be right? Yes, about 4 crore would be the incremental impact. Okay, and so, uh, you know, if uh, given that you've streamlined your cost structure and, uh, you know, the the core employee increments are a one-time process, sequentially, can we expect any headcount multiplied by, let's say, a 670 or PAPM to be a straight addition to EBITDA? Or, uh, you know, like, am I getting the math wrong somewhere? Ideally, yes, with it because we are not planning to increase any headcount. Uh, yeah, other than uh, on the hiring front. So ideally, the net revenue should directly contribute to the EBITDA in staffing business, excluding the DA impact. 
Okay. Um, understood out there. And uh, just uh, if uh, if you could provide some uh, outlook on the specialized staffing business, um, understand there's been a prolonged uh, level of weakness in the industry, but um, any signs of recovery that you're seeing and uh, when do we uh, you know, expect uh, this, uh, this to recover by? And also the 30 new customers that we added, are these IT clients, non-IT clients, or what is the nature of the work that we're doing now? Um, on the specialized staffing front, uh, we still uh, don't have uh, a very clear understanding on how uh, the market is going to pan out in the near term. Uh, however, uh, you know we we are confident that on a long term basis, the IT has always been cyclical. So uh, we are anticipating that you know this uh, downturn will very soon get over and. Uh, we will uh, start seeing some kind of uh, hiring because uh, on one front, if you look at uh, the utilization factor, uh, most of the IT services companies have reached 85 to 90 percentage. So, uh, and they are also bagging uh, new deals. So, under those circumstances, they might require uh, more headcount additions to be done to deliver to those projects. So, uh, we are anticipating that maybe. Uh, one or two quarters down the line, IT services companies will definitely uh, start hiring. Uh, on the GCCs front, we see that uh, uh, there are a lot of new GCCs coming into India and uh, they are hiring, but the volumes are not comparable with IT services as I mentioned in my commentary. But uh, we are, uh, we are uh, targeting uh, to acquire a lot of these GCCs. Coming to the sales point, uh, Yes, the logos are all GCCs actually. We have been going behind the GCCs and the seven large GCCs are uh, potentially uh, a very uh, big uh, opportunity for us to get the growth in the uh, near term. Okay, and then margins of GCCs are comparable uh, to the tech companies? Uh, GCCs in terms of volumes uh, are not comparable with IT services uh, volumes. However, uh, they come at a better bill rate and margin. So, um, uh, what I meant is that we may not be able to uh, match the headcount, but uh, um, you will see that the results also are uh, reflecting that you know we are able to maintain the revenue uh, despite losing uh, some of the headcount. Also, if I can just add to what Sunil was saying, um, the element of outlook on the IT industry is uh, at this point still uh, kind of muted, uh, and I think that's kind of uh, visible with what the IT services companies have been calling out to market. Uh, we believe that this cyclicality will take some more quarters to turn around. Um, but the element of being prepared for when the market turns around with a larger client base and your question about the new logo signed up, uh, most of them are in the product slash uh, GCC uh, buckets. Um, and I think uh, while the absolute numbers will not be large, uh, it is starting to work with them and building the traction on their requirements. These are specialized staffing rate card model uh, kind of uh, mandates. Um, and at least basis the current outlook on open positions and the new client sign-ups, uh, the view is that the decline in numbers should get stemmed in Q2. Okay. Uh, thanks so much for answering these. I'll get back in queue for more. Thank you. Participants, you may press star 1 to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Nikam from Tunga Investments. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, so thank you for taking my question. Sir, I don't know whether you've answered it previously. Uh, what is the PAPM for general staffing and for the DA business for FI23 and this quarter? The PAPM has been uh, flattish uh, for the last two quarters, uh, Gaurav. It is, for staffing business, it is currently at 680. And for uh, DA business, there has been a decline because NEEM is the highest PAPM contributor for us in DA business. Currently, it is at 550 rupees. 550. Okay, and that also has been flattish? Yes. Yes. Okay, okay. Understood. Uh, if you don't mind, 
So the only thing caught up there is the uh, while it has been flat for staffing at 680, it is on a growing headcount. Uh, net, uh, on the DA front, the flatness comes uh, with a lower headcount. Got it, got it. And maybe just a second question on the DA business. Uh, uh, is there a, what is the outlook for the, like where we'll end the year at? Is it like a declining business which will go down to zero or we are expecting it to uh, like have some kind of, a, some employees will get retained? So, so I think uh, to the end of the year, we are clearly looking at a positive headcount uh, play. Like I actually called out, uh, given the current trajectory of client acquisition in our NAPS, NAPS and other uh, service areas, uh, mm -hmm. we should be able to net stem the mean losses in Q2 itself. Um, work here by, by end of Q2 and probably get into a positive trajectory from Q3. Uh, so from a larger P&L and headcount perspective in DA, we look to end on a positive note for the year. Got it. And this this uh, new uh, DA business that we plan to occur, will that be at a similar PAPM or it will be different? No, it will be at a slightly lower PAPM, uh, Gaurav, primarily from a perspective that uh, Neem was the highest margin uh, element of the business. These will be at a slightly lower. Got it, got it. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for answering my question. Thank you. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Ashish Chopra from Goldman Sachs Asset Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, Ramani, just wanted to check with you on the trajectory of absolute EBITDA while you articulated that you expect it to grow. Uh, another four crores of impact from this uh, DA segment. Uh, so, and, and I guess uh, associate increase of 13,000 also led you with uh, led you to a two crore incremental EBITDA. So, so could we see this kind of getting offset by DA over the next couple of quarters before the absolute EBITDA grows? Or if you could help us with the bridge of how do you more than offset the four crores going forward? So, Ashish, this four crore will be spread over two quarters. And mainly in this quarter, we had ethics seasonality almost three and a half crore. So, that will be gone from next quarter. So, uh, and also the staffing on staffing front, since we are not adding any further costs in the back end, except for marginal hiring related direct costs. So there should be a direct growth uh, uh, in EBITDA uh, coming from net revenue headcount addition. Uh, I, I cannot quantify the number, but uh, uh, sequentially there will be an improvement in EBITDA quarter on quarter from Q2 onwards. Okay, I got it. And, and also wanted to just understand what's really happening in the specialized staffing margins. So they are still uh, below 7% and you've brought the core headcount down from 520 to 370, almost 29%. So any operating, negative operating leverage is taken care of. Uh, you've let go of a 1,000 employee uh, associate telecom project as well. So that should have added positively. You're incrementally winning more from GCC. IT services is low, which is better bill rates and margins. And yet the profitability is down from 9 to less than 7. Uh, so uh, despite all of this, so how should we really think about uh, this growing further? I mean, what are the other levers that could take it higher? It, it's really largely driven around the productivity uh, aspect, Ashish. I think uh, the reality there is we have to maintain a certain headcount uh, for the demand that is there, and uh, the demand is only kind of replacing at best uh, what is being lost as against leading to a net growth. Uh, so I think as demand comes to the table and the team is able to drive a higher productivity, uh, we will be able to have the margin improvement come in. Uh, I think we could make a choice to reduce further headcount and costs, but they have been retained on the back of expected demand and capacity uh, ret retention uh, at our end. Uh, so I think certain volume 
uh, economies come into play, uh, and I think that is really what has depressed the margins and will adjust as demand comes back in. And, and just lastly, from my side, could you just give us a ballpark estimate of what's the breakup of the specialized staffing headcount between IT services, GCC, and non-tech? So uh, currently we have 37% uh, uh, is the IT uh, services, and uh, we have uh, non-tech around 13% uh, tech in non-tech, and uh, balance is uh, GCCs. Got it. That's helpful. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Alok Deshpande from Novama Institutional Equities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, good evening, everyone. So, uh, two questions from my side. One, uh, for starting with the general staffing, uh, I wanted to understand now, uh, I wanted to understand the dynamics of uh, once you start getting into the festive season, etc. Uh, when do you first start seeing the build-up or interest from the clients in terms of uh, what sort of sorry, headcount? Sorry to interrupt, uh, but your voice is not clear. I uh, couldn't get the question. Yeah. Uh, is it better, Ashok? Yes. Okay. Uh, so my question was, on general staffing, when you start getting closer to uh, the festive season, uh, when do you uh, start seeing interest from the clients in terms of what headcount they'll be needing, et cetera, and what are you hearing, at least the initial uh, uh, initial indications from uh, some of your clients which are, you know, more related to the festive season? That was my first question, Ashok. Yeah. So I think uh, it's a little early for getting input on festive season from customers because most of the festivals this year are coming into Q3. Uh, so I think towards the end of Q2 is when organizations will start planning for the aspect of the festive season hiring. But having said that, I think uh, just independent of the festive season demand, uh, Q1 did see a strong uh, uh, growth trajectory in the staffing headcount as a function of the verticals and clients that we are working with. Uh, Q2 also has a strong demand uh, pipeline, uh, and we believe ideally Q3 should have it stronger uh, given the uptick from the festival hiring. But as of now, we don't have the view on festival hiring outlook from the corporate. Sure, sure. No, I, that is exactly what I was getting at. I mean, uh, you started the year very well with the headcount edition. Uh, so just trying to figure out whether, you know, we can, uh, you know, f sort of finish the year or, you know, at 25, 30,000 kind of edition. I mean, is that the number you're looking at for this year? I, I, I mean, our belief is we should be able to, given the sustainability of demand over the quarters. Sure. Uh, uh, so my second question was, I mean, if you look at the last four or five years, you know, you have seen the trend of PAPMs come down. Uh, and basically, you know, as you also mentioned that as clients get larger, you know, they, they sort of uh, look for slightly lower markups also. Uh, but uh, historically, guys have always uh, guided towards a 75-25 mix in terms of fixed PAPMs and then 20-25%, which is variable. But given the trend in PAPMs, is it fair to say that uh, variable pricing is something where there is a lot of resistance from clients? Uh, because they haven't seen that play through over, over a period of time. Yes, uh, agree with you on that. Uh, because... As we have been calling out, our transition from 100% fixed to being able to uh, get 25% variable happened over a number of years. We have been able to sustain and hold at that 25%, but we have not been able to increase it. Uh, I think clearly from a sales agenda perspective, uh, it is better for us to have a variable uh, markup, primarily that it protects us from wage inflation uh, element. Uh, so, I mean, Karthik is looking at trying to see how that can further get driven. Plus, I think, uh, as he called out, we are trying to innovate on various other upsell uh, cross-sell opportunities uh, that hold or improve the PAPM over the coming quarters. 
some of the initiatives uh, he has started taking live uh, early green shoot uh, playouts but i think as we get to the latter part of the year we should be able to comment more clearly on how those uh, interventions innovations are playing out sure uh and just if i may squeeze in one last question uh earlier uh, you know uh, you should give a number out in terms of what business you are doing in terms of where you for pay the employees first and then where you get the uh, the, the payment later from the clients i think that was 85 15 85% and 15% or 87% uh, something of that sort where is where does where is that number right now So we now are at 40-60, uh, where we do 40% of the hiring. Um, as Karthik called out, last quarter we did 19,000 hires. Uh, on an average, we are doing about six and a half thousand hires now, um, and we see that number steadily increasing as we go forward. Uh, no, Ashok, I was referring to the the uh, the. the part where you guys uh, pay the salaries first and then you get paid from the clients as opposed to uh, the same uh, there has been no uh, major change on that front so about 13 14% is funded uh, and about 86% is collect and pay got it got it thank you very helpful thanks thanks a lot ashok and all the best to the entire team thanks thank you The next question is from the line of Vivek Sethia from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Sethia, I have unmuted your line. Kindly proceed with your question. Hi. Uh, good evening, everyone. So, just wanted to you know get a recap of the two points which I had mentioned earlier. I missed out on those. So, uh, the recruiting from non-recruiter channels. and the net cash balance and itr refund if you could uh repeat those uh, then i mean I'll, i'll go forward to the next questions sorry vivek you were not clear on that question could you just repeat it so uh, the data point on net cash and the non recruiter channels like as a percentage of total hiring okay net cash some yeah so on the net cash balance as of june 2023 we are at 330 crores out of which almost 220 is free cash the remaining is into working capital uh, in terms of non recruiter yeah vivek uh, the you know like ashok mentioned i think first, the first metric is uh, the overall uh, hiring has gone up which is that we are doing ourselves is 15k to 19k which is from q4 uh, to q1 the non recruiting is uh, 30% of that uh, number uh we like just to clarify on that the cash balance of 330 crore is after the buyback payout of 120 crore and on top Got of it. this we have tds receivable of another 230 crore got it um just to clarify i guess in our last call you had said that the non recruiter channel is 50, 50 almost 52% of the associate hiring is that correct it varies uh, depending on the profiles and the industry that we are catering to uh, on this front vivek so it won't be the same uh, it uh, depending on the profile it varies okay uh, so a couple of more questions i had one was with regards to your client concentration if you could provide uh, that data as to how much your top 10 clients contribute in terms of associate volume and uh, if you could break down the total additions uh, in terms of uh, like the total new logos that you have acquired during the quarter into small medium large like you did last quarter and uh, also my third question like if you could uh, throw some light on the hr services segment and how do we see that moving forward because this uh, quarter it has reported a negative ebitda if i'm not wrong so yeah just those three questions i think the uh, um I don't have the immediate uh, data point on the top 10 as associate numbers, uh, but uh, at a revenue level, it's about 33%, and that has kind of stayed the same uh, across the quarters. Uh, not a big change on that uh, front. Um, I, I think from an HR tech perspective, there are three businesses in there. uh there is the element of rectech uh edtech and hrtech uh the rectech business has been steady and has seen incremental growth uh the hrtech has kind of been flattish uh over the period 
the seasonality is really in the edtech side, and there are two elements to that. One is the aspect of corporate training and university mandates. Uh, quarter one is really not when admissions and renewals of students happen, and that leads to uh, lesser billing in Q1, which has been the track for the past many years, and that continues to play out. Uh, the second element is also uh, we do a lot of corporate training, especially in the IT area, and overall IT training uh, budgets were lower and the training numbers have been lower, but we've started seeing some element of attraction to mandates and requirements on that front. Uh, so I think that will play out as we go forward. Uh, I think even on the university side, uh, the Q2 uh, should see a larger billing, um, and typically Q3 is normally their highest billing as a function of admissions and uh, student uh, renewals. Uh, on the new logo acquisition, um, I think Sunil called out for specialized staffing, but in general staffing, uh, it's been across uh, various uh, sectors, but uh, BFSI, consumer, uh, and uh, industrial, uh, coupled with retail, have been the four uh, verticals where we have really added uh, new logos. Uh, some of them have come in uh, with healthy demand, uh, and uh, that should complement uh, what Karthik called out earlier of his outlook for Q2 for headcount growth. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so just wanted to get a better understanding on the edtech segment, like uh, if you could maybe, you know, give an understanding of how we see that moving forward in this year and maybe going forward the next uh, few years. Uh, obviously, year-wise, you know, we get to... Uh, include the impact of seasonality. So if you could uh, explain it that way as well, it would be great. Yeah. So I think on the edtech side, uh, like I called out, there are two verticals or revenue streams. One is the corporate and one is the university side. Uh, I, on the university side, uh, the seasonality of student intake and renewals are more or less skewed towards Q2 and Q3. Um, and you know, that will play out as we go forward. But I think the key focus for us is to sign on more universities. So we work with about 20, last year we worked with about 26 universities. Uh, we are looking to add about 10 to 12 universities uh, to that pool this year. Uh, and as we go forward, we will look to add more universities where we are providing the services and hence the student numbers. Uh, I think on the corporate training front, uh, the trajectory is normally, there's no seasonality impact, but I think this time the impact is really purely from a perspective of the IT industry downturn and uh, budget constraints. But as that starts to open up, uh, we should start seeing the element of revenue uh, uptake uh, happen there. In terms of growth on revenue uh, in a tech business, year on year, on average, it's about 30% growth and uh, at an EBITDA margin of 8%. The Q1 seasonality, if you take out the Q1 seasonality, the rest of the three quarters contribute to almost 90% of the billing. So that's where uh, the impact of uh, negative margins come in Q1 for a tech business. Okay, so just to conclude, you're trying to say that on an overall basis, or on a yearly basis, you see yourself doing 30% growth in revenues and an EBITDA margin of around 8%. That's right, for EdTech segment, yeah. For EdTech, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ramni. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Chandra from HDFC Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, and and you know, thanks for the opportunity. So, uh, no, my first question is uh, on the... Chandra, your voice is not clear, so may we request you to use your handset, please? Is it is it okay now? Yes, sir, please proceed. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So, sir, my first question is on the attrition in the general staffing business. So, have you seen, uh, you know, uh, like moderation on the attrition in the general staffing? And also, if you can, uh, you know, uh, state how has been the cross-hiring there? In the in the general staffing and uh, also in in the in the DA business, 
X of the name impact. Okay, so around around like you know 30,000 associates that we have X of name. How do you see that growing, in, say, in the next two years? Because you know, if I'm not wrong, the uh, composition there is very different from what we have in general stuffing. And the, you know, there we are focusing more on the manufacturing side, uh, you know, mostly on the PLI and you know, the electronic manufacturing side. So how do you see that growing over the next two years? Yeah. Uh, Amit, uh, on the staffing front, attrition hasn't really reduced much. Uh, so I think uh, as a play out to the various verticals that we cater to, attrition still stays high. Um, I think the only way for us to get larger net growth is increasing the gross ads, and that is really what the focus has been. Uh, so I think uh, the element of the roughly uh, 13,000 headcount growth uh, has come from uh, increasing the gross ads uh, as a combination of uh, the hiring increases and the numbers that are coming from the customers. Um, at this point, uh, our view is that attrition is not something that we can address. Um, we have to take it for what it is um, and just focus on the gross additions. And that's something that we are kind of consciously driving. And I would say uh, the aspect of having taken the hiring gross ads to 19,000 and, you know, uh, looking to increase that further as we go ahead and stuff is, are all measures in that direction. Uh, from a DA perspective, we focus uh, not just on manufacturing. Uh, we focus on manufacturing and services uh, sectors uh, as a customer base. And I think both of us, are, both of them, are potentials for us to be addressing growth for the future. So while Neem as a scheme has a sunset and we'll see headcount reduction, uh, other areas is really what we have been focusing on, um, and we have done client acquisition. We have started feeding the element of early growth, but larger numbers will happen over a period of time, and which is why we believe that we will end the year on a more positive note for headcount in the DA business, and by which time we would also have exited uh, Neem comprehensively, uh, and hence we will only be looking at net ads thereafter. Uh, but we will cater to both uh, services and manufacturing uh, in the DA sector. Okay. And sir, in terms of the investments that we have already done, uh, you know, at the start of the year, and and also, uh, uh, you know, at at what point uh, we can see uh, again the investments coming back? Uh, you know, because uh, in the last one year we have not seen uh, you know much in terms of pickup. But uh, you know, at what point of associate total associates we are uh, you know invested in the business? So if you really look at it, I think I'm assuming you're referring to the investment in terms of the headcount uh, increased choices we had made last year uh, across businesses. And those have uh, largely kind of been uh, rationalized uh, over the years uh, and corrected to the capacities we believe we should run with. Uh, the view at this point, Amit, is that we hold the headcounts, uh, factoring for the growth that we see coming. Uh, there will not be a large headcount uh, increase at the core level for this whole year, uh, and we will manage the growth on that. Uh, I think the earlier call out that Ramani uh, did in saying that, you know, the addition, especially if we look at staffing, uh, without much of a headcount growth, uh, should ideally start flowing to the bottom line. Uh, so I think that's a similar statement for most uh, businesses uh, as we see it this year. Okay. Okay, so thanks and, uh, and all the best for the future. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you. 
thank you very much. Um, I think, uh, as we had called out, uh, the some headwinds in uh, businesses and seasonality have played out for quarter one, uh, which has been to an extent compensated by the strong growth that we have seen on the staffing side. Uh, the core headcount rationalization and bandwidth uh, prep for the current market situation is what we are at. Uh, we believe we will be able to sustain the growth for the year with the current, current headcounts and costs that we have with marginal changes as we go uh, forward. Clearly, uh, with the change in seasonality in the uh, HR tech uh, front and the continued growth uh, projected with the current outlook in staffing, uh, coupled with at least a stemming of the losses uh, in the DA and the specialized staffing businesses, uh, we should start seeing an absolute EBITDA improvement as we go forward. Uh, we expect no surprises. Uh, and we will stay uh, focused on driving the growth uh, into the coming quarters. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ICICI Securities, that concludes this conference. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.